Hey all, your OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the new A25. This is a contender for one of the best value new Android smartphones in 2023, selling for around 170 bucks, so quite affordable, and for the money you're getting a very impressive 6.7 inch OLED display at Full HD Plus resolution, has the under display fingerprint scanner, and more importantly, a ultra fast 120 hertz refresh rate, so it feels buttery smooth as you're navigating around the UI. And for a phone in this price bracket, it has impressively slim and symmetrical bezels, including a very small hole punch for the selfie camera, which is by the way 8 megapixels, so it really is a world-class display, surprisingly, on a phone that is so affordable, whereas previously a display of this kind would have been relegated to much higher cost flagships on the market. I also appreciate the fact that this is a flat display instead of being curved on the edges, so it doesn't have any accidental triggers or touches as you're holding it. It's rocking a 6 nanometer octa-core processor from MediaTek, the Helio G99, which is actually a processor we've seen in some other Android devices and tablets. It's actually a tried and tested chip that works quite well. It's comparable in performance to some Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 to 700 series chipsets. Meaning, although the GPU isn't going to be quite as powerful as an 8th gen series chip, it still is more than plentiful for everyday usage and for casual gaming. It's also rocking a pretty impressive primary 50 megapixel camera, which is further assisted by a depth sensor for portrait bokeh effects as well as a macro lens as well. Although you won't find an ultra wide angle lens on this setup, there is an LED flash and it does have some AI processing capabilities that adjust the scene automatically, which we'll see later on in this video. Design and fit and finish are also really not bad for this price, including a matte glass on the back which doesn't have any fingerprints as you're touching it and gives it actually a fairly good feel as you're holding it, although the frame of the phone is constructed out of polycarbonate. You will find on the right hand edge a power key along with a volume rocker. These keys are quite clicky and tactile to press on. The very bottom here just features the Type-C port for charging and by the way 18 watt fast charger is also included in the box which uses USB Type-C. There's also a SIM ejector tool, a quick start guide with some stickers, and more importantly, also a TPU jelly case for protecting the phone, which ironically enough, we don't even see on much more expensive flagship grade packaging these days. So you get everything you need in the box. And by the way, there is a sizable 5,000 milliamp hour capacity battery inside, but despite that, the phone still feels quite lightweight and slim, which is impressive since this is a cell that can last easily through a day, if not even two days, before you have to charge it up again. There is a single loudspeaker on here, so stereo set isn't quite available, but you do have a standard 3.5mm headphone jack. Another rarity these days, but great to see, although you can also use Bluetooth wireless headphones and speakers if preferred. Other specs here include 6GB of RAM and 128GB of system storage, although that is expandable via the SIM card tray, which can also hold a micro SD card. Connectivity options are also relatively fully stacked. This is a 4G LTE phone, but honestly that's more than good enough at this price bracket and also comes with dual band Wi-Fi in addition to Bluetooth GPS. Perhaps the only missing sensor would be NFC that would be nice to find maybe in a next revision. Otherwise, we're talking about a nearly stock version of Android 13, there's not really any bloatware present, there's just the Google Apps as well as the Play Store pre-installed, as well as a quick support shortcut from New. Which, speaking of, this is a phone brand that is based in Hong Kong and the US. So although we haven't seen too many of their devices in the past, they have historically focused on excellent value Android smartphones. So this is one of the first devices I've tried out from them, and I have to say it's quite impressive. I can see them being a rival to options including Xiaomi, Redmi, Honor, Blue, so on and so forth. They are right up there when it comes to the fit and finish, as well as, again, the decisions they've made. Since you can't really have it all on an affordable smartphone, the fact that they really focus on making the best display possible, as well as a smooth enough user experience, I think are the right decisions, and it really is a visually impressive screen, I can't stress that enough. So anyways, under advanced settings, you can even change things like the color temperature. Furthermore, you can change the, again, refresh rate, scaling it slightly down, or keeping it locked at 120Hz. And again, because of this fast refresh rate, scrolling through longer lists feels buttery smooth. Everything else, though, is pretty stock feeling when it comes to options. There's not too much extras going on, although shortcuts including double pressing the power key to instantly jump into the camera can be accessed. And if you prefer, you can use face unlock as well, but it's not quite as secure as the fingerprint scanner, which is honestly fast enough on here that I didn't really feel a need to go that particular route, but at least there is an option on board if desired. Plenty of also wallpapers on here that take advantage of the material UI theme, similar to on Pixel devices, changing the colors and accents to be more consistent with the wallpaper that you're picking. 
Another neat trick borrowed from originally Pixel devices would be live captions. So regardless of if the video you're consuming has built-in subtitles or not, if you turn it on, it will use onboard machine learning to generate a caption. Otherwise, there is a FM radio capability on this phone as well, which makes use of the headphone jack as the antenna. So if you have wired headphones plugged in, you'll be able to access it if desired. And there also is a basic sound recorder built on in that you can use for quick memos and notes. And speaking of, this phone has excellent microphone quality as well. So for making phone calls as well as doing recordings, the mic pickup has been really clean and crisp, which is also an area that is kind of rare to see on less expensive smartphones. Otherwise, again, all the animations, transition effects, and the UI do feel quite smooth and responsive. Taking a closer look at the camera interface next, when you jump on in, the screen brightness will crank up a little bit so you can see it more easily in the dark. The UI is relatively simple, but you're able to navigate through a night mode, which will increase the exposure time to capture more details. Although perhaps one limitation of the G99 chipset is that video recording is capped at 2K res, but still is plenty sharp. And you can also go into an Ultra HD resolution mode for photos that will capture at the full 50 megapixels to preserve even more detail. Google Lens for scanning and barcodes and text can also be instantly pressed down below here. There's also a portrait mode, and under more advanced options, you can toggle into the macro mode. A pro mode here also allows you to adjust properties like ISO and white balance more manually. Beauty, filter, and film effects on on here as well. So this will apply essentially a template over the footage that you're taking as well as slightly change the color grading. Last but not least, up top you'll find HDR manual controls and the AI toggle that you can turn on or off. And if it recognizes certain scenes, including aforementioned text, plants, food, people, it will change the scene properties slightly automatically. Now as far as results are concerned, I would say it is decent for this price range. It's not going to necessarily be an iPhone or a Pixel killer, but it's also not really realistic, I would say, considering the huge cost savings that you're talking about here. Generally speaking, images are quite detailed, and the AI mode does have a tendency to be a little on the more oversaturated side, but at least it is full of life and energy because the colors are really vibrant and eye-catching. And you can certainly get some pretty impressive looking results if you are just playing around with it, such as the falling leaves here, as well as this tree, even though the sky here is brighter in the background, is still doing a decent job as well, just to give some examples. Even though, like aforementioned, perhaps the colors aren't quite as vibrant or eye-popping in real life. So the default tuning is perhaps similar to on some Samsung Galaxy devices, which opts for a similar type of look, but overall definitely not bad, especially in this price range. Here's also a quick demonstration of the difference between the regular mode, which kind of keeps images at around 12 megapixels to save on memory, versus the full 50 megapixel mode, you can just zoom in a lot more and see the details here on the tree leaf, even though there's no dedicated telephoto zoom lens. Again, having just more megapixels means you can crop on in and still retain a good amount of detail. Some takeaways would be that it is a pretty good sounding single unit in the sense that it surprisingly has a little bit of depth to it. It's not too tinny sounding. That being said, it is a single unit and not a stereo set, but again, I would say reasonable for this price bracket. And again, the screen here is really the highlight of the show. It's just so beautiful and immersive that it just makes content consumption a dream. It is a slightly larger phone, again, at 6.7 inches, so it's also large enough to really enjoy even slightly longer content. Now, the Reception quality of this phone has also been quite strong due to the polycarbonate frames and as a result I was almost getting full bars constantly using dual band Wi-Fi and so you don't have to really worry about buffering or waiting too long for videos to begin playing back. Even the keyboard here is using the default Gboard, so it includes swipe support and feels pretty ergonomic. Here's also a quick web browsing test just to serve as example. The Verge is a pretty complex page here. We can also request the desktop version and see how it renders. You can tell that the Helio G99 is still doing a pretty good job. Obviously, you can still find some occasional moments of small hesitation. It's not going to be 100% as fast as the aforementioned 8 Gen chips, which are true flagships. But for this price bracket, it is more than usable enough. Overall, it's a pretty enjoyable experience for reading back articles, and 6GB of RAM on here is good enough as well for just jumping back and forth between around 8 or 9 tabs, things were still held into the background, and system optimization seems to be pretty well done for the most part.
And as for doing a little bit of gaming, there's no title from the Play Store that you aren't able to install. Even larger games, including PUBG, Asphalt, Minecraft, will work just fine, although you can't expect the highest frame rates 100% of the time, since the GPU on here is more of a, again, mid-range chipset. That being said, for casual gaming, again, you can still get a pretty good experience, and at the very least, this is not a processor that really overheats, so there's no thermal throttling issues to speak of either. The entire phone feels quite cool during operation. So again, as long as you're not expecting miracles when it comes to super competitive gaming, I think you'll still be mostly satisfied for the vast majority of folks out there, any social media application, casual gaming, all of those tasks can be handled with ease and still feels quite fluid and more than fast enough. So that is more or less it as far as our closer look at the new A25 and really shows how far budget smartphones, even new ones, have come here in 2023. And primarily, I'm just impressed with this beautiful display, which really is flagship level. And since the screen is one of the most immediate aspects of a phone that you interact with every day, I think it's a very good decision to focus on this component. So I think that new has definitely done a great job here on the A25, which is perhaps their most impressive phone to date. So thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been the new A25, one of the best value Android smartphones for under 170 bucks. You can check out more details of interest in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.